second Sunday inspiration chat this year. Wow, this year is kind of flying by for us, isn't it? And this week, I want to talk about joy. And I want to talk about receive and nourish. Those are the two big words I want to talk about right now. Um, I want to talk a little bit first about our journal the word in your book of notes. I thought it might be nice for me to share my process of reading the word and then journaling it. For those of you that really don't understand the process yet, or you're just getting there and you're wondering why are we doing all these backgrounds, I thought I might share a little bit about what my process is. First of all, I choose the same time of the day to open my Bible. Mine, if you know me, you know that mine is my morning meditation, is what I call it. And I also have a very special place inside my home. And I also have one outside my home where I actually go and sit and read. And I find that these kind of little rituals, um, this little appointment I have with myself at the same time in the same place every day, helps me get in there, makes it easier for me to actually get in there and make it happen. And I have been doing this in the same time, in the same place, um, for, I think, nearly three and a half years now since I started my morning meditations. And before that, I was, I was still doing them, but I didn't really have a name for it. And I didn't really um, have the, the wherewithal to actually make myself do it every day, <laughs> if that makes sense. So... I want to move on past that. Those are the first things I do. I have a good, have a regular time and a regular place. And the next thing I want to talk about is preparation. I do a few little things first where I actually um, give myself a minute of like quiet time. So no matter what has happened out there in the world the rest of the time, when I get into my space... I give myself about a minute or so to just calm myself and center myself. And I do that with quiet breathing. And then I lift up a little prayer where I open my heart, where I ask God to please open my heart to the wisdom that I'm going to read today. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So this is my little way to just kind of connect instead of, you know, dialing on the phone or whatever that we do to connect with other people. This is my place to just kind of dial in to Jesus and God and get myself in there. Hi, Shauna. Um, so I find sometimes that it helps me to reread the passage from the previous day before I open and start reading the new one. Sometimes that helps me. And that also helps kind of ease me into this day. And I always read the scripture at least twice. Sometimes I read it more than that, but it's always at least two times. The first time is to overview and get the general vibe and feel of what, what's happening and what is being said. And the second time is to deepen my experience with it. So if there's anything I missed the first time or didn't quite sink in or whatever. And sometimes if it's a really difficult one or one that is, is just not resonating with me on that particular day, I may read it more than once. Okay, so we have picked our time, picked, picked our place. We have 
breathed and we have said a little prayer and then we have read, read, read the scripture. <laughs> and the next thing to do after that is journal. That's the piece that a lot of people may not do um, or may not understand how to do. And that's what we are here to learn during this whole experience. Um, and this is where I just allow the presence of God to lead my heart and my pen. And by that, I mean I don't overthink this at all. I just absolutely just pick up my pen when it feels the right time, and I start to write. And it's more like, I guess it would be like a free writing exercise or a brain dump, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I just want to get it all out initially. And... At some point, I feel that it is time to put my pen down and take another breath. <laughs> Somewhere along the journal experience, that's what happens. And sometimes I might write for 30 minutes, and sometimes I might write for 30 seconds, and that's all there is, and sometimes that's all I need. So it's not really about setting a timer and doing this and taking four hours to do this study or four minutes or whatever. It's more like just taking the time it needs for you to make that connection. So... Um, then I just take a few minutes to sit with the feelings that have come up for me and um, really try to explore those. If I feel uncomfortable or if I feel at peace, sometimes I feel um, confused, sometimes I feel sad. There's all kinds of different emotions that I feel and, you know, sometimes because I, I repeat stuff over the years, and sometimes I may have sat with that verse one year, and it made me filled with joy because something good happened, and the next time I read it, I may be filled with sadness because there is something else that I felt was sad in there. So anyway, sit with those feelings. That's another part of it. And if a word or a phrase pops out at me, I may do one of two things. I may return to write some more about it, or I may circle it or highlight it or doodle it on my page. And what is so good for me is that I often find that this is the exact thing that I need to explore with my paints or my pens or my markers. That's exactly where it's leading me into my art. And that's where my art becomes prayer and prayer becomes art for me. And I know you've watched me over these past 20-some days. I think this is the 22nd day. We've made 20-some backgrounds so far in this little course. So I know you've watched me work. And sometimes it's just a matter of making a mark or a line on that artful page or the canvas or your journal. Sometimes it's that. And sometimes it ends up just being a doodle. And sometimes the doodle or the line may lead to me covering it with paints or inks or something. You know, I may just feel it needs a pop of color. And... I know you've seen me work, and hopefully you see that I just go for it. I have, I've been walking into the studio for enough years now that I know that just go for it, Rebecca. Just go for it. That's all you have to do. Don't overthink what you're trying to do, and I know you've watched me overthink things, too, and I know you've watched me putz around too much to where I've spoiled things, but this time it's all just about making that mark and getting in there and doing it. 
and I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that you have seen that that is my joy. That is my joy. And from the bottom of my soul and my heart and my being and my relationship with God is that I believe joy is a form of courage. I can choose to be happy and joyous. I can choose that. No matter what's going on around me in the world, and there's so much happening around us today, everybody today, that it just takes a simple decision to go to a joy-filled place. Just a decision. I'm going to go there. And I think that may help some people today know that you're going to be all right no matter what direction you go in or what direction the world is going in today. And it's all going to happen because God has a plan. He has a plan for all of us. So let me see if I can get this on here. <laughs> Receive the word and nourish your joy. That is the biggie for today, is receive and nourish. And that is exactly what our book of words is all about. Finding that very peaceful, peaceful place to connect and interact with Jesus. Yeah, that's what it is. And when I get stressed and when I get pulled a hundred directions and when I get frightened or think I'm going to be anxious, I can go to what I call, I call this little chapel of my heart. And I, I wasn't even planning on talking about that today and I haven't, I haven't shared that with very many people in my life, but I know that Many, many years ago, the Holy Spirit helped me build a chapel in my heart. And that is the place that I can go, no matter where I am, no matter what time of day it is, no matter how many people I'm with, I can go to this place in my heart, this little chapel in my heart, and I can connect with my Lord and Savior. And that brings me the greatest comfort that I could ever, ever ask for. So receive and nourish that joy. That's what I'm asking of you, or I'm asking you to try, because I've been practicing this a long, long time, 30, 35 years now. Because I can remember the day this happened back in, I believe it was 1985, when I had that moment with the Holy Spirit and we started building this house. It, it, this little chapel in my heart, it wasn't built overnight by any means. It took a long, long time to build that one little block at a time. And, okay, so I'm just asking you to think about it. Just think about it, and maybe if this resonates with you, or you connect with this, or you feel like you connect with this, maybe it can bring you some peace during these ragged times that we are in right now. Okay, so 40 backgrounds. 40 backgrounds. That's just a starting place. That's just where we're beginning. And each one of those backgrounds, no matter how beautiful they are, I don't want you to get attached to those because we are going to do other things over those in the future. During this Lenten season, we're just going to be making these backgrounds. That's to just ease you into the process. And, but we are going, we've got plenty of things that we can do with those in the future. So I hope you are connecting somewhat with this new, fun way to approach the Bible and the Word. This um, 
Bible journaling and a junk journaling style is I'm learning along the way with you all because this was, you know, I've, I've told you this was just put on my heart right before Lent because I had another direction I was going to go in. So actually, I'm just building this with you one step at a time, one baby step at a time. So I'm hoping I'm making it easy and fun for you. And that's, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to do every single day to show you that we can do this in under 20 minutes. We can make some really nice art. And I think some of it, some of it's been a little iffy, but like I said, we are going to be using those as our foundation levels and we're going to build other things over top of those in the future. I promise. So come Come and join in the fun with me. If this is your first experience with me, I am just asking you and inviting you to come along. And most of you have a lot of time right now on your hands to be able to do some new things. And it's not too late to start. We're only halfway through right at the moment. So you can come in and do the other 20 pages with us. No problem. But let's work on the word and on our book of notes together. So I just want to say, and wrapping up here, is how can I help you? How can I inspire you in your creativity today? And how can I serve you? Those are my three mantras. Those are my three goals. Those are my three things I want to do every day when I get up and I walk into my studio and I open my journal and I start to, to do something. And I want to tell you that I don't plan these ahead. I actually wait till after I do my reading in the morning before I walk into the studio and turn that page to that book. And that's when I let the spirit move me. That's when I let the muses come together. And that's when I paint what's in my heart. I might have an inkling of an idea of maybe a color I want to use, or I can't tell you how many times over this process where I've had something in mind that I thought I was going to do, and by the time I got my readings done and I got my other stuff done, I was going in a whole different direction, I promise you. So... I would love to see what you are doing and what you're making with the pages that you're doing and the printables that I'm giving you. You can find those printables on RebeccaEParsons.com if you just scroll down the cover page to free printables. I think it says free printables or printables or shop or something like that. I think it's the shop. Um, then you will find the link to the page where all the printables live for now. And I think some of those, they're getting better. I hope you've noticed that they're getting better as I move along in creating these printables. So I'm kind of hitting my groove in that part of the process too. So I hope you appreciate those. And I hope they continue to grow through this whole process because I want those to be very valuable for you in your process too. So I'm just going to end this chat with all the love I have in my heart for each one of you who is, who has decided to take this journey with me this year or this Lenten season, whatever the case may be. And I love you all and I am so happy to be able to, to be just a tiny part of your growth and your journey. That's what what I love every day is you and watching you on your journeys. So I'm going to end the way I always do. May joy be with you all.